What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tattoo Critiques. Today we're going to be taking a stroll down memory lane and checking out these tattoos that I did nearly 20 years ago. There will be a lot of self-reflecting, a little bit of fear, maybe a tear or two, and also laugh a little at some of the choices I decided to make. Because trust me, they're not all good, but that's okay because I want to share with you my beginnings and where I came from. I want to talk about some of the choices I made in these tattoos and why I made them because they weren't all just out of my head. Sometimes it was the people I surrounded myself with that gave me the ideas or just gave me inspiration in general. I think it's super important to look back and reflect on your past work and just see how much you've grown. So that's exactly what we're doing today here with my work. Basically, I'm going to be treating these critiques as if I was sending them in myself from 20 years ago. Huh. Where am I? And who are you? Well, I guess I'm you in 20 years? And I planned on critiquing your work for all my work. For who? All I see is this camera and that frail guy with a shitty beard. Hey. Well, you're not wrong, but we've got viewers that we And when did you go bald? Well, we decided to shave our head about 10 years ago. Looks good, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. What the hell am I doing here? Well, as I was trying to say, we're going to be critiquing my past work today. Or your work. Or I guess our work. Whatever. Cool. Count me in. Well, this shouldn't be awkward at all. Well, since you're going to be sticking around, which tattoo out of this old portfolio are you most pr proud of? Yeah, this one. Ah, the Edward Scissorhands. I remember this tattoo well, and I remember being very happy with the results of this tattoo at the time. What are you trying to get at? Well, what do you like about this tattoo? Look at that dinosaur. And that blue background, it's so pretty. And the way that it just all flows in a nice circle, the composition is really on point. Well, you've got some good points, and I do like the environment that you've made for them. But looking back on it, there are some things that I would have changed. For instance, the blue sky background that you have going on in this tattoo is just a bit patchy. It could definitely be a lot more smooth with less holidays. The same could be said for the buildings in the background. They just aren't that consistent. And although I'm a fan of the composition overall, I'm just not a huge fan of what's going on in the right edge of this tattoo. It just kind of looks like icy chunks. I don't know. And it looks like you forgot to finish the outline on the two front blades. Well, I did that for a reason. And what's your reason? Well, I figure since the blades were kind of coming out of frame that it would make them look a lot more soft if I didn't have that outline on there, you know? Is that it? And yeah, I think it's dope. All right. Well, let me tell you why you're wrong. Asshole. I'm not an asshole. You're just thin skinned. Lose the hair, grow a pair, buddy. Well, it's really not giving off a softer edge sort of feel. It's really just making it look like you forgot the outline. If you wanted it to feel like a softer edge, what I would have done is maybe just shade the tip of that blade a nice soft medium gray, something just to give it a nice clean edge. And the dinosaur is a cool touch, but you maybe could have added a little extra texture in there. And the last thing is the face is a bit muddy and dark. It's not really that clear. You think you could do better? Well, I have learned a lot in the past 20 years, so maybe. As a matter of fact, check out this one I just did a few years ago. One of the main things I learned is how and where to use contrast. And there's not a whole lot happening in your tattoo. It's pretty flat. And although you do have a lot happening in this tattoo, sometimes less truly is more. In this case, the skin tone. If you look at this tattoo from a few years ago, you'll notice that I left a lot of skin tone to show through, in contrast with a lot of heavy solid blacks to stand the test of time. One of my favorite things about realism is adding textures in those dark areas. And that seems like something you don't quite understand yet, young Padawan. Star Wars, really? Well, if you look at the hair in your tattoo and the hair in, well, our newer tattoo, you can tell that I put a lot of texture in those dark shadowy areas. That's something that really helps sell the believability in realism. Yeah, but what's that going to look like in like two or three years? Well, as a matter of fact, this is what it looks like in two years. And sure, maybe there's a couple areas we can refine or touch up, but for the most part, I am pretty happy with how this turned out. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, but I just did a portrait here. Where is it? Here, check that out. Oh, yeah, I remember this one. It's not so bad for your first portrait. There are a lot of things that I do differently now than I used to do with my portraits, that's for sure. For one, I'm really spending a lot of time on these portraits now, rather than just rushing through them like I used to do. One of the first things that I notice when I look at this tattoo is the lack of shading in the tones. It looks like you whipped in those shades just to get them in there. 
And if you look really close, you can see these whip marks all over his forehead. And that's just from moving your hand too fast. If you were to slow down a little bit and layer up those shades, you'd get a lot better result. Okay, what else, Mr. Professional? Well, you don't really need these background shades on the outside of the face. They're not really helping out at all. You already have these dark edges on the side of the face, so you don't really need those dark shades in the background as well. It would just help it look cleaner overall. Another thing is you have these white highlights all throughout this face that don't really need to be there. On the glasses and in the eyes are fine, where it's wet or shiny, but you don't really need them anywhere else. And it doesn't really seem like the shading in his right eye is gonna hang around for too long. You could have went a little darker or deeper just to make sure it stays crisp and clear and stands the test of time. Now I do remember looking back and feeling pretty proud about this tattoo, and I am still pretty proud about it, as it is my first portrait. Anybody who tattoos or makes art in general knows that doing a portrait for the first time can be pretty intimidating. But you've gotta start somewhere. So good job, buddy. Hey, thanks. I'm hoping to do a lot more of these in the future. Don't worry, I don't see that being an issue. As a matter of fact, in about 2010, 2011, you start to get into a lot of color portrait work, like this ash from Evil Dead, for example. Dang, that shit's fly. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't remember seeing these bright, vivid blues in Evil Dead. I don't think they really have a home here in this tattoo. I remember thinking at the time that I wanted everything to be bright and vivid, and all my color tattoos had to be as bright as possible. But when it comes to a tattoo like this, that shouldn't be the case. Because this movie was dark and gloomy, and you want to give it that same sort of feel. I actually tattooed this same exact reference only a few years ago, well after we made this one. As you can tell, this newer tattoo feels a lot more like Evil Dead, and the skin tones that I used were a lot more true to life. The blood actually looks like blood, and he doesn't have that stupid rockabilly hairdo. And what's funny about both of these tattoos is that they probably took about the same amount of time to complete. I just didn't know exactly how to manage my time properly on this first one. I think I wasted a lot of time on areas that weren't necessarily the main focus. Like that added hair swoop. I remember that the reference for this particular tattoo got cut off right in the middle of the hair, so I had to make up the hair for both of these tattoos. But you can tell I really didn't know what I was doing the first time around, and didn't make it nearly dark enough. And the simple fact that I decided to add a lot more texture to this new one is really what set these two apart. Well, at least it looks like I'm gonna get a lot better. Yeah, and I would hope so. That's the idea. Onward. And I want to talk about this one because at the time I was very proud of this one. And I'm still happy with it. I still look at it and think it's a beautiful tattoo, but I do wonder how it held up over the course of time. The main reason being that I didn't really use any outlines in this entire tattoo. At the time when I made this tattoo, it was really trendy not to add any outlines to your work. It was kind of like a new hot thing. And as you guys know from watching previous episodes, my thinking on that has changed quite a bit. I do think outlines are necessary, whether they're bold or barely there. They help keep the structure of a tattoo intact. Duh, you mean tattooing 101? Of course, I know, but we've got to experiment, right? I mean, I guess. Anyway, I do think not adding any outlines made this tattoo feel very soft, again, at the time. But just having some kind of gray wash outlines running through this tattoo would have helped it stay together a lot longer. I think the goal of this was to make it look like a painting, in which it does but it also needs to stay strong for 20, 30, 40 years from now. And as much as I do love the background colors on this one, I feel like if you were to strip those background colors away, this tattoo really wouldn't be that strong at all. <laughs> see, you suck too. Well, this was 10 years ago. Would you like to see something more recent? I mean, not really, but I'm sure you're gonna show me anyway. This guy. Well, how about this one from 2016? One of our hometown heroes, Michael Jordan. This one was done over a few sessions on my buddy Mikhail and was actually used in a Chicago Bulls commercial. There's not a whole lot I would do different with this tattoo, to be honest, as I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. That's not to say I wouldn't have a different opinion on this maybe 20 years from now. But that just goes to show you that you don't have to rush through any of these tattoos. You can take multiple sessions if need be. Especially having a second or third pass, you can really squeeze in those details that you really want in there. But boy, that trophy was no joke. That was probably the hardest part about this tattoo. And if you look really close, you can see a reflection of what I believe is to be his sister in that trophy. A colored portrait can be a very difficult tattoo to pull off because there are usually a lot of subtle tones that you don't normally see at first glance. In this case, there are a lot of pinks, purples, greens, grays, and browns in his actual skin tone. And if you cheapen out and use just one or two base skin tones, it's really not gonna have that realistic effect. All right, since there isn't much to say about that one, let's move on to the next one, which is actually the tattoo that got me into micro portraits. I had some time at a convention a handful of years back and somebody wanted a Mac Miller portrait, but I didn't have time for a full size tattoo. So I asked if they'd be down for a smaller version of Mac Miller. I was super stoked to do the tattoo and we actually did it about three or four inches in height. So it was actually pretty small, but we did manage to pack a lot of detail in. Would I have done anything different with this tattoo? I'm not sure. I don't really think so. 
I would be curious to see what it looks like with a little more jacket shades, but for the most part, I am pretty happy with how this turned out. I actually loved doing this tattoo so much that ever since January of 2019, when I did this tattoo, I've kind of been on a micro portrait kick. Yeah, but what's that gonna look like five years from now? You're still here. But anyways, I've gotta wrap this up and you've gotta go, get out of here, get back to work, and I'll see you in 20 years. My pleasure. Well, all right, guys, this has been a strange one, but thank you so much for joining me and sticking around to the very end of the video. I hope this gives you a little bit of insight on the path I've taken to get where I'm at today. And I know we've only seen a few tattoos today, but it was really nice to revisit some of my old work. And I think that's pretty important as an artist. By looking at your own work, you immediately know where you need to go next and what you need to work on. And remember, this is 20 years worth of work packed into just six tattoos. It's gonna take a very long time to get where you feel comfortable. And you're going to have ups and downs along the way. But as long as you learn something from every tattoo, that's the only way that you're going to grow. Well, that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next week. No, it'll be the night. <laughs> oh, we're for you.